these are dark times, there is no denying. <sighs> Tell me where he is. Our world has faced no greater threat than it does today. But you can't fight this war on your own, Mr. Porter. Quite kind of, it hasn't quite sunk in um, the fact that we won't kind of be, be making Harry Potter films anymore. I don't know how it feels because I've, I've never known anything else. This has been it for me. But it feels so yeah, strange that it. I've grown up and it's been documented in the, in the way that it, it has. It's kind of all I've known in a weird way, and it's uh, it's bizarre saying goodbye to the place. We're very lucky that we have the next two films to look forward to, and, and I'm sure plenty more of Harry Potter stuff to, to, to enjoy, but it's, uh, it's a strange thing to leave it behind, definitely. It's affected my life in very positive ways, I think, generally speaking. I mean, one of the things I always am keen to point out is that from a very middle-class background, I went to a very privileged uh, school, predominantly white and middle-class. Being taken out of that environment and put into an environment where you meet people from all different backgrounds, I think has really broadened my view of the world. So it's sort of made me a more rounded person, generally speaking. One of the defining things about making the movies is I've had the opportunity to work with some smashing people, not just the cast, who are delightful. You know you've met them. They're really charming and lovely. But just behind the camera, there's been some wonderfully talented um, collaborators I've been working with. And action! For me, the overriding arc of the stories is, uh, is about, it's about a loss of innocence and it's about somebody going from a boy to a man and discovering um, that the world that he thought would be magical and, and full of, you know, en never-ending excitement and joy is actually one in which he has a tremendous responsibility and a very heavy burden to carry. So I think it's, that's, that's sort of the overriding journey. And I think in the, um, in the last part, you see him turn into a a full-blown warrior, really, who is willing to lay down his life. Ron's kind of, he goes through quite a, a big arc in this one. He um, kind of gets a little bit stressed out, I think. He's, right, we sorry. see a much darker side to him, because uh, he's kind of frustrated with Harry and jealous of uh, Hermione and Harry, and it's, yeah, it kind of all comes out, and we see him kind of snap, and it's, yeah, it's, 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 it was really cool to kind of to see that side of him. Your parents are dead. You have no family. <laughs> Stop! Let go! They can expect her to, like, become a woman. She, she's so in control. She saves Harry and Ron on numerous occasions. She's always planning two or three steps ahead. Um, she's, she's great. She's the real hero in this movie. Go. Leave. But what you get from part one, I think, is, is completely unfamiliar territory. And there's no sanctuary at Hogwarts. There's no funny new teacher played by, you know, someone that you're looking forward to seeing the cameo and bits of magic to make you laugh. This is a serious film. They're on the run, and there's a, a date with destiny, uh, and uh, facing them, there's an inevitable sense of a collision that you've known from the very first story onwards. And that, and that I think, makes, you know, there's a lot of tense stomachs. You sit there and there's real silence in the cinema because you can all sense that something's coming. Do you know what? You're talking to someone who loves all that intensity and, and all that scurry stuff. And I would argue that audiences like it too. I just think they do. I think it's compelling and it's intriguing. And I think it's because of its, its intensity and its darkness, it sort of draws you in. Sometimes there are surprises, you know, when I watch the movie that I have no idea how something will look until I get to see it. So it's kind of fun watching the end result because you never really know, you know, what it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like in the end. The chasing through the woods scene, that was quite challenging, mainly because me and Emma get very, very competitive over who is a faster runner. Um, I, I personally think it's me. She'd give you a different answer. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure she beat me over long distances, but over short, I, I, I think I beat her every time. Good job! Awesome! I think uh, it's a real high watermark in terms of ambition because the filmmakers never compromised for a second. Every single film was made the way it needed to be made, you know, and, and not just in money, but in terms of art and storytelling. The only way I could make the movie or movies I wanted was by spreading it across two movies, basically. 
because it was impossible to squeeze it all budgetarily into one movie. And it gives me the opportunity to make two slightly different movies of the same book. The first one is very intense and verite and um, moving and melancholic. And the second movie is an action picture, big widescreen, operatic, fantasy picture. And, um, but both movies are Harry Potter and it's the continuation of the same story. So it felt like a very generous thing to do with this final chapter. We have infiltrated the Ministry. You have nothing to fear if you have nothing to hide. The longer we stay here, the stronger he gets. I must be the one to kill Harry Potter. I have to say, seeing this movie was incredibly rewarding and exciting. I was like so nervous. I just, I put so much into this, into these last two films and I just, Getting to see them and just being blown away was just the biggest reward and I'm just, I'm very excited to see people's responses to it and yeah, I'm excited for that. Deathly Hallows Part 1 is a really haunting, disturbing, powerful film and you get a really tangible sense of danger from it and paranoia and uh, they don't patronise, they don't think they're making a series of children's films that are sequels, it's one eight-part story and that is told the way it needs to be told.